It's quite difficult for young investigators starting up their careers to get enough resources to really do the riskier things. And this is a really important point. I think the role that uh, private nonprofits play in this arena of how do you support science in, in, in a highly leveraged way so that you're, you're, you're putting your money where perhaps governments would not do is critical. I was not the typical scientist. I grew up in the inner city of Chicago. I didn't know anybody who was a scientist. I was the first person in my family to go to college. And I always liked science, but I never thought about it as a career until I started working in the lab. And I guess I'm what you would call the typical lab rat. I loved being in the lab and spending all of my free time there um, doing experiments and getting, getting a result. As scientists, we always want to understand the unknown and make that new discovery and answer questions that people haven't asked before that hopefully very quickly could change people's lives. When I first met her, you could just see there was a spark and there's just amazing creativity. She epitomizes what I feel is sort of the next wave of uh, scientists because she's smack in the middle of one of the most interesting fields of neurobiology. My lab studies the molecular mechanisms underlying itch, touch, and pain. Millions of people worldwide suffer from disorders that affect our sense of touch, and that includes chronic pain and chronic itch. And we're particularly focused on chronic itch these days because it's such a widespread problem with very few effective treatments. And one of the most common causes of chronic itch is eczema, which is often called the itch that rashes. I was diagnosed with eczema when I was probably around seven or eight years old. I had a lot of rash on the inside of my elbows, uh, behind my knees, which are very typical places that most people present with eczema. When I was in my 20s, I just had full-blown eczema head to toe. Skin is the largest organ of your body. So if your entire skin is covered in a rash, it itches, there's redness, there's broken skin from scratching because the itch is really unbearable, it's hard to get comfortable. Right now, I could scratch everywhere. My skin's tingling the whole time. We know that for you to experience the sense of itch, your nervous system has to be activated, and we have to understand not only what's happening at the level of the skin, but how the nervous system gets triggered that starts this vicious itch-scratch cycle, where scratching that itch doesn't cause any relief, um, and it makes the disease worsen, actually. My dermatologist said to me once, she goes, Lisa, if you would just not scratch, your skin would look a lot better. And I thought to myself, yes, I know that, but I can't seem to turn my brain off to, so that I won't scratch that area. I just can't help but go there and scratch it. In my lab, we record neuronal activity and we also do imaging to look at structural regions of the brain, how disease changes the circuits, as well as induces changes at the molecular and cellular level. In the last five years, we started to first define the cells and the molecules that mediate our sense of touch and pain in the periphery, and we're just starting to take that information and build tools to start to decipher how higher level processing goes. We're going to really see exponential discovery in the next 10 years.
It would be amazing if Diana's research <laughs> came to fruition and she got enough funding, she learned everything she could, because I think there would be overjoyed eczema patients everywhere. A lot of the most exciting science coming out these days is from high risk, high payoff projects. And we've been fortunate in that we've received a lot of private donations to fund that. Really outside the box ideas, pushing the boundaries, not just accepting sort of the current dogma, but really sort of going all out and doing high risk research that allows us to push the envelope and make really breakthrough new discoveries. If we don't have a pipeline of really talented, smart, ambitious people like Diana that want to come into the field, well then, we're not going to get there.